Hello and welcome to We Are Unity's End of Financial Year Wrap Up, an opportunity to take a breather from the moment that is to reflect on the year that was and highlight four of our key learnings from the past 12 months. Now the market's certainly been on a roller coaster, with the ASX index kicking off with analyst uncertainty, yet closing at an all-time high of over 7,300, with confident investor behaviour across all key sectors. We're seeing more organisations acquiring their innovation from the outside in to keep up with fast changing consumer expectations. Now that sparks a boom of mergers and acquisitions and private equity investment. We're also noticing more startups successfully evolving to scale up operations. And that's awesome to see, especially given Australia's drop last year to 23rd place on the Global Innovation Index. The behavior of boards has also shifted from risk avoidance to one of conscious risk design. Now that's exciting because it's reducing the amount of red tape between organizations and their transformation agendas. At the same time, CEOs are allocating more capex into developing performance-driven cultures as the expectations of HR continue to focus more on commercial growth outcomes like customer advocacy and market share. The days of chasing happiness scores and colors are certainly numbered. A shadow side to CEO behavior in response to the increase in power now sitting with employees has been the need to reassert control by mandating three days per week in the office. In fact, we've seen one large multinational organization telling their people if they're not in the office five days per week, they'll lose a portion of their bonus. The dark ages are clearly still alive in some pockets. Now, if I had to pick the four most critical learnings from FY21 that have made a huge impact on company performance, the first would be that organizations need to give their employees freedom within a framework a clear decision-making guide on how, when, and where to work. Shifting their mindset from days and inputs to one of hours and outcomes. Simply leaving it up to the employee to make ways of working decisions isn't sustainable. Second, your business strategy is only as useful as it is usable. So often employees are clear on the what and the why, but not so much on the how. And in a time when focus and pace are more important than ever, making sure that your business strategy is prioritized into do first, do next, and do last is priceless. Third, if you want to influence the board's investment in future ways of working and culture, you can't rely on sentiment analysis. You need tangible, actionable productivity insights. Tailor your people survey to your business strategy so you can report on things like prioritization and decision making. I can't stress enough how much time is wasted on generic off the shelf questions designed by technology survey providers that get you hooked on nonsensical feel good benchmarks. And finally, we're in the era of connection and inspiration to influence change. Yet so few leaders have received any training on how to influence others. Yet everything hangs off their ability to establish chemistry and maintain energy, especially through a camera. So if your organization is going on a transformation journey, this capability in your leaders has to be a non-negotiable. Now that's it, another year done and dusted. It's had us continuing to rethink about culture and org design and connecting with employees, aligning CX to EX and how we work in general. And while we have no doubt many more bumps in the road ahead, we look forward to tackling them head on and together, reimagining how we can all contribute and grow in FY22. Stay safe and stay connected.